I want to speak to you about mending the nets. <clears throat> mending the nets. I'm speaking to God's family. I'm speaking to the Lord's people. Because I believe that the greatest harvest is coming. It's coming closer and closer and closer. We can see what's happening in the world. The greatest catch ever. So I speak about the catch. I speak about souls for the kingdom of God. It comes right in the end time. Just, be, just before the rapture, I believe. Some say it only happens after the rapture. If you don't know what the rapture is, ask Pastor Marcel. He last week taught some good things on, on the revelation. He said that I won't be here after Revelation chapter 4. So if you want to know what the rapture is all about, go and read Revelation chapter 4. You know what's happening. The greatest catch ever for the kingdom of God. This is the heart of God. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He died for souls. He died for us. So that we can have eternal life. And be saved from eternal death. That was the, His purpose why He came. The Word says, for this purpose the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. We know what the works of the devil is. To kill to steal and to destroy. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, to save us from hell. <clears throat> we can't even begin to imagine the horrors of hell. We can't even be we can't begin to imagine. But there's another side. We can't even begin to imagine the glory of God, the wonderful things God has prepared for those who love Him, for those who are saved. Our minds cannot even begin to understand what He has prepared for us who love Him. So I want to say to you this morning, don't give up. Say to somebody next to you, don't give up. Run your race until the final day when that trumpet blows and Jesus comes to get us. Amen. So this morning I'm going to speak to you about mending the nets because as a congregation we know what the nets are. The nets are our relationship. The nets are the cells that we are in. We are not a cell church by accident. We are a cell church because God has prepared us f over many years for the great harvest that's going to come. The Lord has given us wonderful facilities. Why? Here in Meyerton. You know, when, when visiting pastors come here, they say, what on earth is going on here in Meyerton? What on earth? They can't believe what they see, what God is doing here in a small little place out here in the sticks. Yeah. Pastor Clive always says, you're out there in the sticks. And come and see the congregation and what they experience here in the congregation. We don't know. But others know when they come here, they experience the love. They experience the unity. They experience strength. They, they experience the presence of God in the house. You know, when people walk in through that door, they can feel something. They can experience something here. And we need to give glory to God. We need to, we need to honor the Lord and give Him thanks. Come on, let's give Him a praise offering. He has blessed us. The Lord has blessed us. And we need to, we need to mend the nets. You know, after, after any catch, the fishermen will go out. They look at the nets. Some nets got torn. They mend the nets. They clean out the nets. Why? Because they are going out again for the great catch. Now, if you look at... The, the story in the Bible about Jesus sending out the disciples for the first catch. We see that they lost a lot of fish. But the last catch, they didn't lose one fish. They drew the net. And the Bible says the net did not tear. Isn't that wonderful? And I believe that the, the Lord's net is not going to tear. It's, we are going to mend the nets, and we are going to make the nets strong, and the nets are not going to tear. When the harvest comes, that great catch comes, we're going to catch all the fish. Now, if you look at Revelation chapter 13, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, you'll see there, it says there, love never fails. Love never fails. Well, that's the answer. If we want to mend the nets, we have to walk in this love. This love is the different kind of love. This is the, the love of Jesus, the love of Christ. It is the love of the Father manifested or, or demonstrated through the Son. Jesus is the expression of the Father's love. If you want to know what God's love is like, look at Jesus. He is the expression of God's love. There's no difference. Jesus came to express the Father's love to us, to the world. I don't care what religion says. I don't care what theology teaches 
I care what I see in the Bible about Jesus. Can you say amen here this morning? Jesus is the expression of the Father's love. And what did he do? He went around doing good, healing all that were uh, oppressed by the devil. This is what the Word of God teaches us. I don't care about philosophies and all these kind of things. Let me tell you a story. We're getting too serious here. The students were at university and they were studying this, this thing about does God exist? The existence of God. And so the, the psychology professor, philosophy professor, he started asking questions and, and he asked him the first question. He said, um, has anybody ever heard God? And it was just quiet. Nobody answered. And then he asked the second question. Has anybody touched God? Just quietness. And he asked the third question. Has anybody seen God? Nobody answered. And then he said, so my logic says, I come to the conclusion that there is no God. So after a while, one, one student stood up and said, can I please respond? And the professor was quite... Uh, he, was, he wanted to hear what this man has got to say. And he said, well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask the students a question. Has anybody heard the professor's brain? Quietness. And he went on to ask the second question. Has anybody touched the professor's brain? Quietness. Has anybody seen the professor's brain? Quietness. I said, well, my conclusion, according to the professor's logic, he has got no brain. <laughs> he got an A from the professor. <laughs> love never fails. It's a different kind of love. Jesus came to demonstrate a different kind of love. A love that's called agape. The God kind of love. It's that kind of love that we do not have in ourselves. It's not filet or any other love. It is a, it's God's love poured out in our hearts by Holy Spirit. We cannot have that love. We cannot walk in that love. We cannot dem demonstrate that love unless Holy Spirit lives inside of us. That love is a, it's an outflow of Holy Spirit through us. Love, God is love. But I want to add something. Love, and I'm speaking about agape, is God. Wherever agape is, there is God. Because God is love. And this is the kind of love that the Lord is going to take us into. This is the kind of love that God is going to work in us. He's busy working in us, that, in us every day. This is the kind of love that we will come to in, in unity in the end times. He will make us one. He will knit us together. Can you say Amen. And I know it's not, sometimes it's not, it's not that uh, easy. But God is doing it through His Holy Spirit if we allow Him. So let us read in Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25. Let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Who can say, I can see the day of the Lord is coming nearer? Just wave your arm if you are awake here in this house. Yes, we can see. I want to highlight three words here. The first word I want to highlight is the word concern. Say concern. Let us be concerned. The second one is not give up. And the third one is encourage these three words here. I want to highlight it this morning is to show us something about this kind of love. The first principle of love is to be concerned for one, of, one another. This is the first principle, to be concerned for one another. It means to, to care for one another. The focus here is to lo is love cares. I'm going to take this word a little bit out of co the context here. Because in the context here, it means that we need to motivate each other to love. 
We need to motivate each other to love. We need to uh, help each other to love. We, we need to, to urge each other to love. We need to spur each other on to love, to walk in love, to do acts of, of love. The focus is, you see, there is a focus in the end times, in the church, and the focus in this house needs to be love. Can you say amen? That needs to be our focus, that love for one another, this love that cares. Who knows that love cares? Love cares. Love cares for one another. Love cares when it's, going, it's not going so well with my brother or sister. Love cares when my brother or sister falls in sin. Love cares when I can see something's going wrong with my, my, my brother's uh, marriage or my sister's marriage. Love, this kind of love, is not an isolated love. It's not a love that's looking from the outside in. It's a love that's involved. It's a love that, that, that comes close. Can you say amen here this morning? This kind of love that Cain did not have when the Lord asked him, where is Abel? And he answered back, am I my brother's keeper? What kind of love? We know what he did. He murdered his brother. He had an evil heart. Am I my brother's keeper? If we have that attitude, there's something wrong inside. If I don't want to get involved in the family of God, if I'm not accountable in the family of God, there's something wrong inside. Can you say amen here this morning? You see, love cares about each other. Love will make us accountable to each other, towards each other. We'll be accountable. You see, if I don't see my brother and sister, my wife just mentioned it, if I don't see somebody here, I'm concerned. As the pastor, I'm very concerned. My, my wife, you know, she's, you know, you, everybody knows. She makes a point in making contact with everybody. I don't think there's one person in this house that can say they've never been in some way been, uh, you know, my wife didn't make a connection or, uh, you know, just make, make, made some time. There's nobody that can say that. But when I don't, you know, it's difficult here when you stand in front of you, look, sometimes I miss people, but sometimes, you know, you can overlook and you, you can't see that somebody is here uh, unless you look specifically. But, you see, love is concerned about the body of Christ, number one. But love is also concerned about those who do not know Christ, those who are lost, those who, are, who do not have any hope in the world, those who are living recklessly, those who are still in darkness. See, love and light is like twin brothers, if I could put it this way. You cannot separate love and light from each other. Where love is, there's light. And we are the light of the world. Can you say amen? Wherever we go, we bring light. So love is concerned. It cannot be isolated. Jesus said to Peter, when he came after the resurrection, he asked him three questions to restore Peter. But what he asked him, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. If you care, show me, show me your love. Care for my lambs. Because this is the heart of Jesus. We need, as a house, we need to care for the little lambs. Can you say amen? We need to feed the little lambs. Make sure that baby Christians grow in the Word of God. We need to help them to grow. This is what's happening in the house. The second thing Jesus said, take care of my sheep. See, caring is, is important to God. He doesn't want us to be a number. He wants us to be a person. He wants us to be part of the body of Christ. He wants us to know where we fit in. He wants us to know that we are special to Him. He wants us to be taken care of in the body of Christ. We are a cell church. Why? Because I can't see any better structure to care for one another. It's only through cells that we can care for the body of Christ. It's impossible for a pastor and even maybe 10 elders or so to take care of 500 people. You can't do that. 
You need a lot of leaders. You need a lot of shepherds to take care of everyone in the house. If somebody is sick, somebody needs to know about that. If somebody lands up in a hospital, somebody needs to know about it and take action. Can you say amen here this morning? It's very special what we have. Jesus said, feed my sheep. We don't just feed the lambs. We also have to feed the sheep. We need to bring the word of God. Because it's the word of God that will feed the sheep. There needs to be strong word in the house. A strong, powerful word of revelation. A strong, powerful word that will feed the sheep and make the, sh the sheep go lay down in green pastures. That's very important for Jesus. The second principle of love is the principle. Don't give up. Say, don't give up. It's not to give up on one another. All of us here have had some bad experiences or got some punctures. Amen. If you look at that little picture there, maybe you've got a little bit wounded in your heart or maybe somebody offended you. In a relationship, there is always going to be some conflicts. There's always going to be some little wounds maybe or sometimes even greater wounds. But don't give up on each other. This kind of love never gives up. My wife mentioned, we celebrated our uh, wedding anniversary. The 25th of November, we were married 41 years. And I know, okay. 41 years. Let me say to you, the only way we can sustain and complete our our marriage vows and to end our marriage happily is through the love of Jesus. That love that never fails. Can you say amen here this morning? You see, what is important? This love never fails. This love never gives up. I think about Jesus immediately after, after the resurrection. He went back to his disciples. He revealed himself to his disciples. He was concerned about them. But he didn't come to, to condemn them. He didn't come to cut them off. Came to them and say, well, you were useless. You all denied me. What kind of disciples are you? Get, I cut you off. You don't, des you don't deserve my kingdom. That's not what Jesus did. What he did, he restored his relationship with them. Can you say amen? You see, the focus here is love relates. Can you say to somebody, love relates? There cannot be love without a relationship. We need to have a relationship. Love relates to somebody else. Love needs to be poured out onto somebody else. Love needs to walk in a close relationship with somebody. I cannot sit on an island and say I love. I cannot isolate myself. It's a sad thing what is happening in the end times. Many Christians are totally isolated. They watch online church. They're part of an online church. Now let me tell you something about an online church. It's unscriptural, unbiblical. It leads nowhere. There's no healing in that. There's no caring in that. There's no love in that. It's just cutting off relationship. I'm not against technology. I like technology if I can use it. Uh, let me just tell you a story. The other day, my wife and myself, we were having some coffee somewhere in a mall. And um, I noticed four young girls early, maybe not even in their 20s, 18, 19, they were they gathered around the table there and I, I thought they were going to have some lunch or something. But each one of them was sitting on their cell phone. They were busy with their cell phone. And we had our coffee and in that time, they never ever left their cell phone. They were busy, they never chatted with each other. I don't know if they chatted through the cell phone, but <laughs> you know, there was no conversation. There was no real relationship. This is what technology is doing. This is what Satan is doing. He's isolating people from each other because Satan is the destroyer of relationships. So sometimes we'll get wounded. What do we need to do? We need to forgive. Say forgive. forgive. I know it's not so easy, but through this love of Jesus, we can forgive through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the love of Jesus, through that love that never fails. We can forgive. And we need to forgive. We struggle with that. 
Ask for grace. God will give us grace. The Bible says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Why? Why do we need to confess our sins? I don't want to go to my wife and just say, oh, please forgive me for what I've done to you. I've done many things. I say to her, please forgive me. If I hurt her, what did I do to her? Maybe I, you know, said the bad word or something. I'd say to her, please forgive me for saying such a thing to you. I'm specific. Amen? Maybe I treated her disrespectful. Then I say to her, I'm sorry I treated you with disrespect. I've hurt you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Can you say amen here? The Bible says here, confess your sins to each other. You know, it's so easy just to say, please forgive me. Oh, forgive me. And you just carry on. Sometimes we wound some, some people. Amen. And some wounds take some time to heal. People carry wounds. We carry wounds in the Bible of Christ. The devil is out there with his armor. He's always trying to, to, to injure us with his armor. There's a battle. We are all in a spiritual battle. We carry wounds. And sometimes those wounds take time to heal. Where do they get healed? In the body. When we come together in our relationship. You know, Pastor Marcel teaches us discipleship. And one of the, the one of the key things I've seen in this in the in the teaching of discipleship is to become transparent, to open our hearts to each other, to confess even our failures to each other, to confess our hurts to each other, to confess our pains to each other. Is that going to bring us into bondage? No, it's going to set us free. It brings liberty in your heart. The devil wants us to be closed up. He wants us to live in our own little corner. He wants us to be isolated from each other. We need to overcome that through the love of Jesus. Like Jesus, he went back to his disciples and said, no, boys, come on. I'm not going to break my relationship with you because you denied me. We're going to win the world for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Relationship. The third principle of love, going to finish here, is to encourage one another. Say to somebody next to you, we need to encourage one another. <laughs> Why? Why? Who needs a bit of encouragement here? All of us. All of us. The greatest thing for me is to be encouraged by somebody else. And I am encouraged. This morning, I'm greatly encouraged by you. By you. We can encourage each other. To encourage somebody is to bring hope, to bring faith in a person's life. You know, we are living in dark times. We're living in, in uncertain times. You know, many people can pull you down. They don't encourage you. As Christians, as children of God, let's make it a, a, a point of focus, you know, to lift each other up, to inspire each other. Can you say amen? You know, when, you, when you're with somebody, and that person encourages you, inspires you. You go away from that person and you say, okay, we can do it. We can overcome. We can make it. We need to be inspired. This is what the Word teaches. This love will inspire us. It will encourage us. I like what Jesus did. After the disciples failed, He said to them, okay, go to Jerusalem and wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Now just think about this. I thought about this. Jesus saying to them, after they denied him, after they, they've come through this whole story of the cross, the crucifixion, the resurrection, then Jesus said to them, now what I say to you now, go to Jerusalem and wait. Because you are going to receive power. I think what happened to the disciples, when Jesus told them about the Holy Spirit coming, that they got so inspired, they got so encouraged, they couldn't wait. I think they went to Jerusalem and they prayed there. We know 10 days they prayed together. They prayed for 10 days together. And then the power of the Holy Spirit came. I think they had this expectation that that same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus to walk on the water, that same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus to heal the blind, to heal the sick, would come upon them. They, they, had, they were encouraged. They were inspired by Jesus, by His love. I think we've got a hopeful future. I always like to say South Africa belongs to Jesus. I always like to say 
our future is going to be brighter than our past. Our future is becoming brighter and brighter. Won't you stand with me this morning and say that with me this morning? Our future is going to become brighter and brighter. South Africa belongs to Jesus. Let's say it again. South Africa belongs to Jesus. We expect a revival in South Africa. We expect an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in South Africa. We expect a great harvest in South Africa. Now let's give the Lord a praise offering. Let's thank Him this morning. Don't sit down. We're going to have communion now. I'm going to close with this scripture here. In Romans, 11, Romans 1 verse 12, the Apostle Paul speaking says, When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith. But I also want to be encouraged by yours. Isn't that wonderful? When we come together in ourselves, when we come together in our celebrations, can't we come and encourage each other? Can't we come and stir up each other's faith? You know, sometimes we feel down. I've got a, I've got a good friend. If I feel down, I go to him. Because I've seen, I've seen it through the years. When I'm down, he's up. I don't know how it works. When I'm up, he's down. So when I'm down, I go to him. And I'll spend half an hour there with him. And then I leave. Then I'm also up. Because after listening to him, he picks me up. It's just like that. You need a friend like that. You need a brother like that. You need a sister like that. You need people around you like that. Can you say amen here this morning? Let's inspire each other. Let's encourage each other. If you're not going away over the Christmas... Christmas period, we're going to have uh, Sunday morning services. Don't miss the services. Amen. There's going to be Sunday morning services. There's going to be good word preached. Keep yourself, keep yourself warm. Keep yourself filled up. Amen. Amen. Next year, I believe, is going to be the year of the eagles. Amen. Any chickens here? <laughs> no, any chickens? Don't put up your hand. Okay. Next year is going to be the year of the eagles. Why am I saying that? Because God is opening our eyes. He's opening our eyes. He's opening our eyes. We'll begin to see things that we've never seen before. Amen. So I want to challenge you in this time, in this time, this holiday time. Don't backslide. Come on. Don't backslide. Stay in the faith. Stay in prayer. Stay in the word. Stay in fellowship. Don't isolate yourself. Stay st be, st be strong in the Lord. And let's start next year with a big bang. Because this year we've, we've, we've gained momentum. Next year we're going to increase that momentum. Praise God. Okay. We're going to have communion now. I'm going to ask the leaders to come forward.